right guys, welcome to another video. I am at XF Motorsports and the topic of today's video is going to be wheel alignment because um, I have this car over here which is my E55 ASL, my race car. Um, I'm going to be doing a full racing alignment on it, setting up all the angles aggressively so the car performs better on the track. But I also have that CL55 over there that also needs an alignment but it's a regular road car so I'm just going to be doing a regular uh, alignment on it just like a normal al alignment shop would do, setting all the values to the factory specifications just like Mercedes recommends them. So it's a pretty good opportunity to show you guys how to set up one of these alignment machines, change all these angles first on a production car and then on a custom car like this and actually going through all these angles and um, telling you guys what is the benefit of changing some of these angles like toe, camber, caster and all that and how to determine even on a completely custom car like this where there is no factory specifications how to determine where you would want some of these angles set up to to make the car perform the way you want it to perform. So yeah, let's get started with doing an alignment on the CL and then later get on to this car and doing the same thing for this car as well. So just a quick recap over some of the basic suspension angles just so that everything else in the video makes sense. So camber is the tilt on your tire when you're looking at it from the front view. If the top of the tire is tilted away from the center of the car, that's positive camber. If it's tilted towards the car, that's negative camber. Toe is when you're looking at the tires from the top view, if the tires are pointing towards the center line of the car, that's toe in. If they're pointing the other way, that's toe out. Uh, caster and KPI refer to the steering axis. The steering axis is the axis along which your front tires will turn when you um, turn your steering wheel. So the tilt on the steering axis when you're looking at it from the side view is called caster. It's measured in degrees away from vertical. And KPI is going to be the same thing, but when you're actually looking at the steering axis from the front view. Um, KPI and SCI, by the way, are the same thing. KPI stands for King Pin Inclination, and SCI stands for Steering Angle Inclination. I talked about these angles in much more detail in the earlier suspension geometry video, so you can watch that if this seems confusing, but this video is mainly going to be about how to actually set up these angles on an actual car. So the first thing you would want to do even before starting an alignment is make sure that your tire pressures are set up properly because if they're not then the car will not be sitting level and if it's not sitting level then it's not going to give you proper results on the alignment machine. Once the tire pressures are set, also make sure that the car is sitting level. On one of these cars with ABC suspension, if it's not sitting level, usually you can drive the car a bit and that usually does the trick, it starts sitting level after that. After that it was time to put the car on the alignment lift and put the wheel targets on. Once the car is lifted to its proper alignment height, next it's time to do a rolling compensation. This is just to get rid of any inaccuracy in how the targets might be mounted on the wheels because this alignment machine actually looks at how the targets are moving on the wheels to actually judge the exact axis of rotation rather than just relying on how accurately the targets are mounted on the wheels. So yeah, basically it gives you really accurate results. Here are the suspension alignment results after checking the alignment. Well, not all of it. I still have to check for caster, but um, right now looking at the results, it seems like my suspicion was wrong. The front actually seems pretty much perfect, like the toes are um, fine and um, even the total toe is really small. But the problem happens to be at the rear, I'm guessing, because the rear seems pretty off. The total toe is uh, 0 0.6 and um, also it has a bit of thrust angle. That means that both uh, rear tires are not pointing in the same direction. They're actually um, pointing towards the right, I believe, negative means. Um, anyways, first what I'll do is I'll also check for caster. For caster, I have to get in the car and turn the steering wheel either way. That way the um, alignment machine will also detect caster and also tell me the SAI, steering angle inclination. And once that's done, then I'm going to start actually uh, fixing these angles and uh, getting them back to the factory settings. For measuring caster, first you have to turn the steering wheel towards the left, then the machine tells you to turn it towards the right, and after that it starts giving you the caster values as well. After looking at the numbers, the only numbers that were way off were on the rear left wheel, uh, so I decided to um, start off by adjusting all the angles at the rear left and then move on to all the rest of them. Now the rear suspension on this car is a multi-link suspension. Usually to change alignment on a multi-link suspension you usually start by changing camber first. And uh, you can change camber by actually moving out the two um, lower control arms or moving in the two um, upper links that are holding the wheel. But the problem with this one was that there was no adjustability in the bolts when I actually checked them so there was no camber adjustment on this rear suspension at all. So without being able to adjust the camber, I went on to adjusting the toe. The toe bolt is actually adjustable. You have to use one of these um, triple square sockets 
and it, uh, the triple square socket goes on one side and the other side I believe is a 19 millimeter you need a 19 millimeter socket for it and you just need to loosen this and then you can uh, turn the bolt using the triple square socket when you turn it it will actually there's a cam that uh, actually rotates uh, it's a cam washer that rotates on the other side and that pushes the tow link in and out and that basically changes the tow angle of the suspension once the toy is set properly, you just need to re-torque this bolt so that it doesn't change toe angle again. Once I was done with adjusting the toe on the rear left, I moved on to the rear right because um, there was a bit of a thrust angle at the rear. That means uh, thrust angle means that the both the rear tires are not pointing straight forwards; they're pointing either towards the left or towards the right. And when you accelerate, that tends to push the car from the back towards either side, whichever way the rear wheels are pointing towards. So to fix the thrust angle, I had to do the same thing on this tire, just make sure that I made the both the rear toes exactly the same, and that brings the thrust angle down to zero. Here's a look at the numbers after making all the changes at the rear, and now you can see that the rear toes are almost perfect. The rear cambers on, well this camber is still a little off because, uh, like I mentioned, there's almost no adjustability for camber at all in that suspension. So I've been able to bring it from negative 1.0 to negative 1.2. That's just by pushing the control arms as outwards as possible, but uh, there's no adjustability for camber at all on this suspension. So I'm guessing this tire must have hit a curb or something which caused the camber to go that off because without any adjustability, um, I don't see how else the camber could change that much. After everything with the rear suspension was sorted, it was on to the front suspension. Now for the front suspension, I didn't have to do too much. All I was doing was recentering the steering wheel because the car had a bit of a thrust angle at the back that I fixed when I did the rear alignment. And that meant that if the steering wheel was pointing straight before, now it wouldn't be pointing straight anymore. For adjusting the toes at the front, some bad mechanic had already over the bolts on these tie rod ends and also stripped one side. So that's why I had to hold it with this um, grip plier and I had to give it quite a lot of heat on the bolt to loosen the check nut. Um, but once it was loose, then all you have to do is you have to turn this tie rod end. Um, if you turn it one way, the tie rod shortens and it brings the toe in. And if you turn it the other way, it lengthens and it brings the toe out. Here's a look at the final values after the fronts are also aligned and um, now everything is looking pretty good. So that means there's only one last thing left to do to take this car off the alignment lift, take it for a test drive and make sure the steering wheel is pointing straight and also hope that uh, the car feels a lot better now. So test driving the car after the alignment is complete and now you can see that the steering wheel is uh, perfectly straight. It's, in fact, the car goes straight even uh, when you're accelerating and decelerating, it just remains flat. So that's perfect, the alignment is all done. So the alignment on the CL has gone pretty well. Now the steering wheel remains flat, the car is not pulling to either side, and um, also mainly what the car was doing before was it was behaving a little funny going over bumps, it would try to move a bit over the place. I guess that was just because of the rear toes being out, but now that it's fixed, the car is perfect now. So that's all good, but the next thing we have to do is put that car on the alignment machine and do a full racing alignment on it, making sure that all the angles are set up properly, um, setting up the toes and also making sure that the cambers are right. Now for the cambers, I was playing around with the camber settings the last time I was on the track on Laguna Seca and um, the last track they actually, uh, the car was at t in Texas. Um, and I believe the rear toes were out a bit. The car was trying to move all over the place. So I'm pretty curious to see what type of numbers I see when I put this car on. Um, on an alignment machine for the first time actually because I have never put this car on an alignment machine before. But I believe right now the alignment would be pretty off. I wouldn't be surprised even if it's like a degree off in terms of toe angles and stuff. So yeah, let's put this on. Okay, so after putting the E55 ASL on the alignment lift, here are the numbers that I'm getting for this car, and it's actually pretty surprising. I was expecting numbers to be 
way worse than this, but actually looking at it, it's actually not as out of alignment as I expected. Um, the rear toe outs that I was talking about that the car felt on the track that it had a massive toe out, it's actually just a little bit of toe out. It's, um, well, this number minus this number will give you the toe out, and that's just 0 0.1 degrees. It is toe out, and I swear you actually feel this toe out. Um, like driving this car at speed, like 200 kilometers per hour, you actually felt that there was a massive toe out at the back, but um, turns out it's just a little bit of toe out that you feel so much. And also looking at the cambers, the cambers, by the way, were just adjusted on the track um, using tire temperature. There was no measurements or anything taken from them. And what's so surprising is that they still have turned out like so precise, like both sides are, this is negative 1.8, this is negative 1.9. Um, this is 0 0.2 and this side is 0 0.2. So that's already better than the cambers on the CL. <laughs> of course, now I have to change these angles. Um, I'm going to start by changing cambers. I'm going to start by changing the rear camber and setting the rear toes to slightly toe in. And then I'm going to move to the front and uh, change these angles as well. And at the same time, I'm also going to explain what is the benefit of these angles and uh, based on what indications I'm changing them, where I'm changing them to. So for changing the rear cambers, I've lowered the car a little just so that I can get better access to the suspension because one difference in this car from your regular production cars is going to be that all the adjustments are done from the top rather than underneath the car. And in fact, most race cars are going to be like this because um, they are set up so that you can make alignment changes when you're actually on the track rather than on an alignment lift. So, um, But anyways, yeah, getting to the camber. Well, actually, first, even before I get to changing camber, talking about what is the benefit of setting your cambers properly, why you need to do that, and how you determine the proper camber for a car like this that uh, no one else owns and you don't know what the right camber of that is going to be. So I would say the best way to determine what type of cambers work best for your setup is just going to be to take your car out to the track, do a few hot laps on it, get the tires up to temperature and then monitor the tire temperature, see how the tire is behaving. Because all camber is, is really um, setting the tire at an angle where it's going to meet the road surface in a way that's going to be using, going to be getting the most out of the tire basically and that's going to give you the best handling results, therefore the best possible lap time. And really how you can tell if your tires are behaving the best or not is just by monitoring tire temperatures. If the inside of your tires is getting hotter than the outside, that means that of course the inside of your tires is doing more work in the corners. That means that you have too much negative camber. And one thing I used on this car was that I also set up a thermal camera and actually looked at the tires, how they were doing through the corners, because a thermal camera is actually, I would say, the best way of determining um, your cambers because you're not only uh, wh when you use a regular tire pyrometer to measure the tire temperatures your tire has already like you've already done your hot laps you're back in the pits and then you're measuring tire temperature like how it is across the tire so it basically averages out all the results whereas if you have a thermal camera mounted on the tire and you're actually looking at how the tire is uh, changing temperature when it's actually going through the corner that actually gives you a much more realistic result of how that tire is actually doing through that specific corner um, and yeah the results that i found out i was actually adjusting all the cameras that i've adjusted on this car were just based on tire temperature and um, that's what's pretty surprising to go back to the alignment machine and see that uh, the tire cam cameras were still set up so accurately like 1.8 on that side, 1.9 on that side. That's really close, by the way. And of course, the rears are right now slightly positive because the reason that the rears have ended up positive is because the last time I did a camber change was at Laguna Seca. Um, I had gone a bit too aggressive with the negative cambers. I had made like a 0.5 degree change in camber and it was 0.5 degrees too much and the car had lost all rear traction at all. So this car actually turns out that it's extremely sensitive to rear cambers even if the rear cambers you change them by 0.5 of a degree and it's too much or too little it's going to lose all <laughs> rear traction So for now what I'm going to do is that um, the car has 0 0.2 degrees positive camber. I'm just going to take that to like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 degrees negative camber. And I'm just going to keep the setting at there. I don't want to add too much negative camber at the rear because uh, the car just doesn't like negative camber at the rear. And it's um, in fact after that looking at other race cars I found out the same thing that other race cars also go with the similar setup like this. They go with a lot of uh, negative camber at the front but really little negative camber at the rear. Um, in fact even Formula 1 cars if you look at their setups they actually go as high as negative 4 at the front for a camber and the rears are only at like negative 1 or 1.5 or something. So it's weird 
wondered why it works out so different than the front, even though the weight distribution of this car is 50-50, but that's the way it is. That's the way the tires are working at their best. Um, so I need to follow those cambers and I need to make sure that I set them up properly. Now for adjusting camber at the rear, it's actually really easy on this car. Um, all these links, it's a multi-link suspension, so five links just like the CL. Um, but the difference is that all these links are actually adjustable and you don't even need to loosen any bolts or anything. You just need to turn this um, tie rod to, uh, if you turn it in one direction, this link lengthens. If you turn it the other way, this link shortens. So if I shorten this link and this link, I'm basically bringing the top of the tire in. That gives me more negative camber. And the toe adjustment is right over here. This is my toe link and um, by turning it one way or the other I can also change the toe angle on it. Now the toe angle does change a little bit while I'm adjusting camber that's why I'm gonna adjust the camber first make sure I get the camber right and then after that I'm gonna be adjusting toe. Now I'm done with setting my rear alignment and here's what I've set the values to. So for cambers I'm at negative 0.3 and negative 0.2. This was also 0.3 a second before but it changes that little bit um, just because of things changing I guess. Uh, the toe is slightly toe in now and I think it should be really stable over here. And the reason this is showing these numbers in red is because I have it set for a Mercedes SLR because um, I chose a Mercedes SLR because that's pretty much the most similar car to this one you could find. It's also front mid-engine, the wheelbase is pretty similar and also uh, it's more of a high-speed car rather than a regular road car. That's why I thought the numbers would be similar but the numbers are still different. The tow angles actually, um, I've preferred to keep them over here which is the same as where the SLR was. Um, and the reason why you would find uh, less of a tow angle in high-speed cars rather than low-speed cars is because the faster you go, um, the more relevant the toe angles become. If your tires are pointing in different directions at high speed, then when weight transfers to one tire or another, it has quite a big effect on which direction your car goes in. So, uh, for example, toe out, the reason why it makes your car so unstable is because, let's say if your outside tire is pointing, like let's say uh, you're going through a corner and you're turning the car this way, and this is your outside tire. If your t outside tire is already pointing towards like the outside of a corner, um, that means that when weight will transfer to this tire, it will pull the entire car in that direction. So it will like try to force the car into an oversteer every time you go through a corner. And that's why it generally makes the car so unstable when you have uh, toe out at the rear. It's the opposite when you have toe in at the rear because now when weight transfers to this tire, it's actually going to push the rear end of the car inward slightly, which of course uh, gives you better stability at high speed. Um, but again, if you go too much on the toes, that is also bad because if your tires are pointing more in a different direction, you can tell at high speed when the weight will transfer onto this tire, it will also have an undesirable effect. It will push the uh, back end inwards too much and you will constantly have to correct that with the steering wheel. So um, generally for low speed, for autocross or for things like that, you would tend to go more aggressive with toe angles. But for high speed racetracks and generally for cars that you're going to be driving on high speed, you will need to keep the toes a lot less aggressive than, of course, uh, low speed setups. And the cambers, of course, like I talked about before, this is completely dependent on tire temperatures. It is uh, quite a lot less than, I guess, what they were running on the Mercedes SLR. Um, let's see actually what values, what camber values um, the Mercedes SLR came with. So it says front, oh sorry, rear. So rear left camber, it's uh, negative 1.25, so it's quite a bit more aggressive than what I'm running actually. Um, and the reason is because when you look at production cars, SLR is a pretty fast car, but it's still a regular production car. It has rubber mounted bushings in the suspension. Uh, it rolls quite a lot when it goes through the corners, but this car has no rubber mounted bushings in the suspension at all. So there's no compliance in the suspension. Whatever you set the camber to, um, it's almost going to stay at that point when the car goes through a corner. Whereas in regular production cars, because of the rubber mounted bushings um, on the lower and upper control arms, when the car goes through a corner and the cornering forces are pushing the tire inwards, it actually loses quite a bit of negative camber. So even if you have it set to negative one, realistically going through a corner, you might only be at 0 0.5 or something. So that's why um, in any suspension with rubber mounted bushings or in a car with too much body roll, the cambers that you'll see will be higher than in a car like this, which has barely any body roll and no rubber in the suspension at all. 
So now that the rear suspension is pretty nicely set up, next I'm going to move to the front. And for the front I'm not going to touch camber at all because camber was perfect on the track. Like the tire temperatures at the front were doing amazing, that's why uh, I wouldn't even touch those values. The only thing I'm going to change at the front is toes. Um, it is a bit of toe in right now, I want to move it to just a little bit of toe out because toe out at the front actually gives you better stability at high speed. Because when you think about the front, what happens at the front when you're turning a car through a corner? When the weight transfers through the outside tire and if your outside tire is pointing inwards, it's going to make your car a bit more aggressive, it's going to bite into a corner. So like with toe in at the front, it does uh, make your car feel more aggressive, like even the slightest touch of the steering wheel will turn your car into a corner really quickly. But of course, for if it's too much toe in, then it gets undesirable at high speed. Your car becomes too difficult to control. Um, that's why I'm going to go with a bit of toe out. That makes your car feel a little lazy, but it's much more controllable. It's um, it makes the car quite a bit more easier to drive. Um, that's why even I think with the SLR, they also had a bit of toe out at the front. For adjusting the alignment at the front, I just had to turn the tie rod a little just to change the alignment to toe out, and that was pretty much everything I did at the front. So here's a look at the final numbers after setting all my values and um, I ended up going slightly toe out on the front um, but by the same amount that the rear is toe in by so um, the rear is toe in by 0.12 of a degree and the uh, front is toe out by that much so um, I think these numbers are going to be pretty good they're going to give me a lot of high speed stability it's going to be much better than before where the uh, it was the opposite case the front was toe in and the rear was toe out um, that shouldn't be the case but that just was the case because I never did a proper alignment on it uh, the only things that I did not change was the front cambers and casters by the way ignore these caster values these are not correct because I haven't measured caster on this properly um, but the actual caster values on the front suspension are like 6 degrees and they're working pretty well too because the tire temperatures are looking pretty good on the front. Well just talking about caster and why you need to adjust caster as well. So the more you add caster on your front suspension it has a pretty good effect of um, when you turn your steering wheel your front tires will camber the right way like both the inside tire and the outside tire will um, lean into the corner so that actually helps you gain traction. But there is a certain amount of caster that works the best because you can imagine on low speed corners you're not you're, you're gonna have to turn your wheels an awful lot because it's a sharper corner but on high speed corners like on long sweeping corners you do not need to turn your steering wheel that much so in order to tilt the wheels uh, by the right amount in high speed corners you need to set up the casters extremely aggressively so you need a lot of casters so even when you turn your steering wheel slightly your wheels tilt into the corner but the problem is that when you set it that aggressively in low speed corners when you're turning your steering wheel an awful lot the tires will also camber an awful lot and then you will lose traction because then your tire is literally just working on the inside edge so that's where getting setting up casters gets a little tricky but these casters uh, for my car are actually set up pretty good for like mid-speed corners they were working their best around um, 100 or 120 kilometers per hour that's where I was seeing the max g-forces um, and the front end tends to grip extremely well it does have when I go through really low speed corners like um, the last turn on Laguna Seca I believe the corner speeds on that were like 60 kilometers per hour or something that's where the front end started losing grip because it was tilting too much and the front end side tire was doing all the work but of course it is always a bit of a compromise if you set up the car for low speed corners you're going to lose grip in the high speed corners if you set it up for low speed corners then you're not going to get enough grip in the high speed corners so that's the tricky thing with caster now after doing a proper alignment there's just one last thing left to do take the car out for a proper test drive and make sure that everything is working okay
crap, it was super fun to drive this car after such a long time. Of course, that test drive had nothing to do with the alignment. I just wanted to drive the car. That's why I took it out for a bit of a drive. And it feels amazing. I can't even wait to take this car out to the track, really push the limits and um, see what this car can do. But of course, before that track day will happen, there is a few parts that I need to make for it. There's a bit of aluminum over there uh, that I need to cut on this CNC machine to make the rear wing mounts for that car so it can have a rear wing. And it also needs a bit more body work. The fenders are pretty close to complete. I just need to finish them so that the front fenders can go on and then we'll also finish all the rest of the bodywork really. Um, but before that, another thing that has come into the shop that I also need to work on is this CLS 55. And it's not such a happy CLS 55 because it has a broken piston inside the engine. Um, well, this story, I'll actually leave it for the next video because it's, it's an insane story. This guy is probably the unluckiest, this is the unluckiest used car story you guys are ever gonna hear. Um, this car, it was a pretty clean CLS 55 that the person bought a year ago and it only had 140,000 kilometers on it, so not even that high mileage or anything, and he only drove it for 150 kilometers, and in those 150 kilometers, you wouldn't even believe <laughs> what that guy has been through, so I'm just gonna leave that whole story for the next video, um, but it's possibly an engine rebuild or a whole new used engine coming for this car because, um, yeah, it, like I said, it has a broken engine, I'll need to tear the engine apart to see what type of damage is inside it, whether it just needs a new piston and um, everything else would be fine or whether it would need an entire new block or possibly um, in that case it might be a better option going with the used engine. So um, all that is going to be coming really soon too. Also for that CL I'm going to be making custom headers really soon for it. So it's insane. There's quite a lot of cool stuff to work on. Um, I just need to pick up the pace and really start doing these things quicker so that I can um, actually take on all these things. But um, thanks for all you guys hearing the word. There's been an insane amount of requests for different parts, different cars that people want to bring in and everything. So yeah, keep the um, crazy requests and cars and projects and everything coming. Uh, the website is xfmotorsports.com. You can see all the details for the shop and everything over there. My email is info at xfmotorsports.com. You can email on that if you have any cool requests or any cars that you want to bring in for any work or any uh, custom parts that you want to get uh, cut on the CNC machine. Um, but yeah, that's going to be everything for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you guys really soon with either of these videos. I'm not sure which one's going to come first. Mm -hmm.